There are two types of people who live in this world. First are those who are open to existing changes. This first group always follows the times, including the use of sophisticated gadgets to change their lifestyle to become more modern. The second group are those who hold fast to anything that has existed since hundreds or even thousands of years ago. They prefer to hide, not appearing as if they ever existed at all. As a result, many human groups include primitive tribes who are isolated or isolate themselves from the outside world. But there is a saying, as smart as a squirrel jumps, it will eventually fall. And as clearly as these tribes can isolate themselves or are hidden due to natural factors, there are times when contact with the world and modern humans cannot be avoided. In this box, some groups like to be there who try to drive them away roughly. And here are the most isolated tribes who finally made contact with modern humans and their world. Yahi Tribe This Yahi group is part of a larger group of the Yana community. They are a Native American tribe from the area of Northern California and the mountains of the Sierra Nevada. In the 1700s, their number exceeded 1,500 people. However, at the time of the gold rush, which is a term for the feverish migration of workers to areas where a lot of gold is found, miners and ranchers flocked to their place of residence and killed many of the residents because they were trying to defend their homes. A man named Ishii was the last person from this group to survive. According to their custom, he was not allowed to mention his name to the enemy and his method of acquaintance only with his family members. Because all of his family members died, he would never reveal his real name and eventually he was called Ishi, which in Yana means man. He taught how to make arrowheads and bows before he died in 1916. Today, certain Yana groups are still alive but not a single Yahi tribe remains. Ruch Vietnam during the Vietnam War, bombs fell on areas thought to be uninhabited. However, it turned out that the bombs scared the local people so that they ran out of the forest to the amazement of the Vietnamese soldiers. Because the forest was so degraded, the Rus had no choice but to join modern society. Even so, the indigenous people of Rus are not forever happy because their tribal values conflict with the Vietnamese government and hatred arises from both sides. Awaguaya. This tribe is an indigenous tribe that is almost extinct living in the eastern Amazon forest in Brazil. And right now, this society only has 300 people left and less than 100 people who are completely isolated from the outside world. The problem that arises for them is that the loggers keep coming to disturb their land and the Brazilian government is slow to protect the area so that they can survive. Most of them were killed, including an 8-year-old girl in 2011 who happened to be in a protected area when loggers destroyed their settlement. This tribe has been chosen by Survival International as the most threatened tribe in the world. The Philippines Batak not only in Indonesia, but in the Philippines, there is also a tribe called the Batak. The Batak of the Philippines is generally considered to be the first inhabitants of the Philippines. They used to be a large and prosperous tribe, but today, diseases brought by migrants have killed many of these tribesmen, and government laws that prohibit traditional agriculture also marginalize the Philippine Batak community. When the Survival International Organization heard of this problem, they immediately launched a campaign to restore their land and rights and pointed out the bad effects of government regulation on the Batak people. Today, the Philippine Batak tribe has only 300 people left, and because they do not marry a member of the same tribe but are married to another tribe, their lineages have mixed so that more and more people debate their identity as the native Philippines Batak. Akunsu Akunsu is a native tribe from Rondonia, Brazil. Just like the Awas tribe, they are also under extinction. They are a group of hunters and foragers who also depend on agriculture. But unfortunately, a group of breeders found their camp and killed the people of Akunsu, then stockpiled the remains using bulldozers to hide evidence of this tribe. Because if this step is not taken, the land will be closed as a nature reserve for the indigenous people and may not be used for ranching or falling trees. There were only five accountants left at the moment, and many believe that this tribe will not be able to survive on such a small number. Jarawa The Jarawa people live on Andamanese Island with a population of only about 300. 
they had long refused contact with other humans until 1997 when they visited local communities. However, from that visit, they immediately fell ill with smallpox. They should receive government protection because they do not harm other humans. Modernity does not make those who live in civilization also erode. Sometimes, there are still many tribes who live comfortably in the forest without being disturbed by increasingly sophisticated human life. They built their civilization that is completely different from ours. If you have heard of the Andaman Island, then there is an ancient tribe that has been a permanent resident of this place for thousands of years. They are the Jarawa tribe who live in the northern part of Indonesia, the Andaman Island itself is part of India, but its location is actually very close to Indonesia. When viewed physically, the Jawara are similar to the indigenous people of Australia, the Aborigines. Its existence is also not a threat because of their habit of being too closed off from strangers. For thousands of years, this tribe has not been touched by modern nuances. They have refused to live like most humans. Just like most of the isolated tribes in Indonesia, the Andaman people still use hammers and arrows as their means of survival. They are also still shirtless and only wear clothes made of leaves and plants. Meanwhile, to survive, the men become reliable hunters. They live from hunting pigs, turtles, and fish caught with traditional tools such as arrows. Apart from that, honey and fruit are also extracted. Don't ask about their skills in identifying plants again though because of the 350 species, half of which they understand. However, the bad news is that this century-old tribe will be gone in the next few decades. Based on the documentary We Are Humanity by Alexander de Reims and Claire Belvert, the Jarawa began to feel annoyed by every visitor who walked in and out of their territory. If the government does not protect those who are only 400 people, then the civilization that has been built may disappear. It is very unfortunate not that intervention from humans makes them have to lose their homes. Because the Jarawa tribe is not dangerous to humans and has been around for 50,000 years, they should be protected by the government. In 1997, they were visited by local communities. However, from that visit, they immediately fell ill with smallpox. Sentinel The Sentinelese are still distant relatives of the Jarawa tribe. This tribe is still shrouded in mystery and lives on a small island near India which is located in the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Islands. Every time people try to get closer to this island, the Sentinels will shoot hundreds of arrows and spears. Because of this closed attitude, it is difficult to know their number even though modern society has made several attempts to make contact with them. Reportedly, the Sentinelese have lived and settled there for thousands of years and are the direct descendants of the first humans to leave Africa. The Sentinelese are known as the most hidden tribe in the world and do not want to interact with outsiders. Anyone who would approach their island in the Bay of Bengal area would have an arrow before setting foot on the beach. But who would have thought that behind their fury, there was an anthropologist from India named Trilokinath Pandit who made it to the island of the Sentinelese tribe it took nearly 24 years to try to make friends with this Sentinelese tribe. I have the privilege of getting in touch with the Sentinelese, Pandit told independent.co.uk before they shot us while trying to land. Pandit and his team managed to land there in 1991. According to him, the Sentinelese have a face as round as a moon with grey-black skin which is part of the Negroid race. There are about 200 people who inhabit the island. The Sentinelese cannot write and count even if they only arrive at number 2. It is not certain that their food source is from the agricultural sector but what is clear is that they survive with marine animals such as fish and turtles. Besides that, they also hunt wild boar and large lizards. Although they are notorious for being cruel to outsiders, they are trying to defend themselves. They are careful, that's all. They want to defend themselves against outsiders, said Pandit. Mayoruna The Matises are also known as the Mayoruna tribe, an indigenous people who live from the Peruvian region to the Brazilian Amazon. The area where this tribe lived, which has lived between Javari and Galvez rivers for thousands of years, is now beginning to be threatened by illegal logging and hunting practices. The Matises have been strong guarding their land against other indigenous tribes and immigrants from outside their territory. The Matises people have their language called the Matises language which belongs to the Panoan language family group. In the last 30 years, they have become mostly settled people living mostly in permanent forest settlements. And most of them still rely on hunting and gathering forest products to sustain their life. Their main income comes from sales of peccary skins and meat. The word Matises itself means people in the Matises language and is also known as Mayoruna. 
The name Ayoruna comes from the Quechua, Runa Simi language, which means river people. In Brazil, the matasses are generally referred to as Mayorunas, while in Peru, they are commonly referred to as matasses. In everyday life, they have a lot of knowledge about the plants and animals around their settlements. Traditionally, they are hunted with bows and arrows. The matasses love sweets and drinks derived from the chapo plant. The matasses made their first contact with the outside world in 1969, when their territory was brought by SIL missionaries into their community. Before that, they had a war with the Peruvian government which bombed their village with napalm and sent Peruvian soldiers to attack their community. Dan James Pantone and Bjorn Svensson wrote an article about how Matisses made peaceful contact with the outside world in the Planet Journal called Matisses First Contact, The End of Isolation. Today, relations between the people of Matisses and the Peruvian government are finally peaceful.